Welcome back guys to the eighth part of our video tutorial series. So um, in today's video we will be basically writing this feature. We will be writing edit job feature to our um, application. So um, right now we don't have this edit job button doesn't do anything. So very first thing we can do we're gonna write we're gonna we're gonna create the event handler for this edit job. Let's go into our source code here. Um, here is our uh, view job component, and here is our view job HTML. I'm going to close everything. So here is our button here, view job edit button. So into this button, let's go ahead and write the event binding. We'll have click binding here this call edit edit developer job and we need to pass the ID that we are editing we have already the object called developer job and then we, this is basically what we, what we need and here is ID okay so we define this method. Let's go ahead, go ahead into our uh, TypeScript file, TypeScript component here, into add job component. Uh, not, so not add, sorry, into view job component, and we're going to write that method. It takes the job ID as of type number. Okay, so if job ID is there, and you can see job ID is greater than zero, meaning we have valid integer coming in. Just for now, I'm going to say alert. We just want to see job ID just to make sure our event binding is working. Let's go ahead and save that and refresh the page. Did job. Okay, we can see the ID that we are trying to edit is here. Okay, that is cool. So uh, to to accomplish that task, I have created a folder called Edit Job here, as you can see, and I have three files: the TypeScript file, type, TypeScript component, and the HTML template here, and then CSS file. So right now, our um, our edit job component is of course is empty. It doesn't have anything. We we just it's just we have the component, decorator component, and just basically specify where the template and CSS files are and some required um, names required packages imported. That is all we have. So even before that, our goal so idea is like when they when there is a job ID we should be able to send the user to the into the edit page. To do that, um, if you guys remember from our one of the previous tutorials, so basically in here we can um, we have also already injected there is a router. As a, as a, uh, we have this constructor injection for our router object. This router has some method that we can utilize. Oops, not that router. I have to say this dot router. Sorry for that. It has this navigate method. To the navigate method, we can basically specify the path to navigate. Let's, we don't have this path, this route defined yet, which this will define that. We will say edit job. That's going to be our route. And then, of course, we need to pass this additional parameter, ID. That's why, so we're going to say here job ID. This should do the redirection into the edit job. Well, even before I can, we can do this, however, 
we need to configure our route. To do that configuration, we go into our uh, job routes folder and we have this routes file. Let's grab one of these here. In, instead of view, the route can be edit job. Not only this, but we also need to pass the additional parameter, the IDs, job ID, right? So we have to say something like job ID right here. This, uh, this is how the parameterized uh, uh, route is defined in any Angular. So basically, after the forward slash right here, we have this placeholder job ID. That would be, at the wrong time, it would be substituted at the ID, job ID. And it's not going to be view job component. Of course, we need to, uh, we need to now import that, that edit job component. Let me see. This folder is edit job and name of the component is edit job component. And in here we have class called edit job component. Okay. Now we can specify here is our edit job route and the corresponding component for that route is edit job component. Okay. That is that. We have to do one more thing. We have to do one more configuration before the route can be uh, activated. Route can be used. We have to go into this third module here and we have to include into this declaration section, right, as we have done for the others. So that can be similar to this. That's where our edit job is. See why it is complaining. Okay, so this is we we, def, we have to import our edit job component here on line number twenty, and then we're just going to register just like the others. In here, we're going to say edit job component. Okay, at this point, if we save and then at least uh, we should be able, if there is no typo, if we didn't make any error, we should be able to see our page. But however, there is already a problem. What is going on? Let me run again for some reason. Okay, so um, here into our method we call navigate, and then this is our route here, name of the route, and then this is the ID that comes in here. So if I do this, and if I go into view, if I go into the view page now uh, from edit, I should be able to go into here's my edit job with the ID. If I come back, that's a different ID. Our redirection is not working. That that was okay. The next thing 
But by feature-wise, we will have similar kind of feature as add jar functionality. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy most of the code. We will need to modify some of the code. If you guys remember, we developed this feature a while back. So I'm going to copy this, this uh, import section here and go into edit job and close this. Close all but this. And I'm going to paste this here, all the input. And then I'm also going to grab most of the functionality starting from here. Most of the functionality here. Okay, the name is that. I don't really need to initialize this one, so I don't need this piece of code. I'm getting rid of it. I'm going to just set this to empty for now, not initialize. All the other, we need the router also. We need, of course, the service here. That's fine. And once of this, we need to modify this one. It's okay as it is for now. I'm going to save this one and also going to grab the, the most of the markup HTML from the add page. And just paste it here. And this is the edit page, so I'm going to get rid of that. Edit developer job, okay. Let's see how does it look right now. Okay, it is it is working, but of course it has a bunch of error. We'll have to fix it. Let me open in Chrome browser. That was running on IE in I prefer Chrome because of the the debugger is a lot better in Chrome. Okay, so let's see why we have this problem. Okay, even before that, now we uh, first thing. So. Here, very first thing we have to do is like when we, we when we should be we should be able to even before we should be able to do edit we should have this ID for example one zero one zero this particular job ID we should be able to retrieve that job ID to do that uh, even before that let's okay it takes I don't know for some reason it. Okay. We are on our edit job component. So I think it is complaining because Okay, I'm going to just undo this initialize developer job for this for night right now. Okay, the reason we're getting those red because um, because of those the, the 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 my data structure in this case the developer job was not really initialized it was null and we were using these null null properties in the in our code in our HTML in our template that's why it's complaining so right now it it is it's um.
run here in Chrome. I don't know why it's okay. It's running in Chrome. This is better. Okay. Now we have state. Everything is binding. Is everything is good? And if I do a view job here, I come into edit job for this particular piece. And of course, right now, as you can see, none of the binding, we haven't done any binding here. Because the whole idea is like when we come into the edit page, corresponding to this job ID, job title, everything should have been bound to this text boxes, all those kind of things. So even before that, first, very first thing we have to do right here, we need to be able to acquire that ID. To do that, we're going to tap into some... Um, there is a something called life cycle, Angular life cycle hook. So basically, uh, we can use, tap into some of those events that it fires, like life cycle hook. One of those is we're going to say this component. Well, even before that, we're going to say, all right, this component implements. We're going to say this this component basically ng in it. So this is one of the one of the event, one of the you know life cycle who exposed by Angular call on in it. So we're going to expose, when we acquire this one, we're going to say implement this, means it has a method. That's the method we need to um, we need to implement. The cool thing is it also provides some suggestion. If you if you do it right here, it says implement the interface. Basically, this guy has an interface called ng on it. We, we, that's what we, will, we would like to implement here. The, the, the cool thing is it provides some hint, this editor. That's kind of nice. So in here, let's define a local. Let's define a little. Um, let me see this. I'm gonna bring this down here. In, in around here, let's define a private variable called uh, job ID of type number. Okay. So whole idea is we should be able to grab that query string parameter and we should be able to uh, assign that to do that um, there is something called activated routes corresponding to the routes that we have defined so we need to import in our router instead we are also going to import a couple of a uh, couple of modules here we're going to say activated route and we also going to import our params here two of these once we have those we can see around here this oh and it, of course we need to do a dependency injux, injection into our constructor here we need to inject okay so we have this private field called activated route of type activated route that we just now that is now that is now inside our constructor. Now with that now we can say something like this. It has a method. It has a property called params, referring to parameters, query string parameter, and we can tap into subscribe method. That subscribe method. It takes param as a type params that, and then we have this arrow function. This code is just to grab the ID from the query string. So we can now say this the job ID equals to. Params we can use it like as a as a, as a dictionary array. So we can say job ID. That's our uh, 
parameter that we define into our router. So at this point, it should have, just to make sure, let's cut, write this into console. Job ID. Oops, it should be console.log. Let's go into developer tools and we should be able to see if I refresh this page here. It's a 1010. I'm assuming that this one right here is coming from that, but to be more uh, specific, I'm going to say. Just to make sure it is it is that log, but not something. Okay. Because having this sub ID is very, very important because this would allow us to go into back in and paste the data corresponding to that particular job. So we always do one at a time, we make sure every step, you know, we make progress and that step is correct. I want to see that message here. Okay, current job ID is 1010. That's good. That means, you know, we, we were able to grab this parameter, query stream parameter. So now we have this. Now we can say, now we can basically ask our data service, um, this is a data service. We can say get developer job by ID. And we can pass this the job ID to this guy here. And this guy is going to return subs because it returns the you know um, observable response. So we can say subscribe. And error. Of course, right now it doesn't know what this guy is. It, so we, there, the next thing we have to do, we can go ahead and inject this method into our service. Let's copy that and let's go into our um, our service, We're, the developer job data service here, and let's go ahead and expose a method. So public method takes job ID as a number parameter and this is very simple git so um, something like this um, and then just pass the job ID And here it should be happy now. Okay, good. Let's make this code a little better. Let's come down here. Let's bring this guy down here for handling error. Okay. Then, so basically, what we can do now here for the, we have the dev job. As a developer job object, we can set that equals to a result and convert that into JSON object, and we're going to cast that as developer job object. And this one also, let's see, we can do this dot. Let me log this one too, just to make sure it's fetching the data. Okay. I don't need this log anymore because we already verified that it works and get rid of that. And let's get rid of this blank spaces, empty line. Okay, that is cool. Just give it a bunch of control L. Why is this problem here? Oh I got rid of something else. 
Okay, we got job ID. Based on that job ID, we go into back in database and face the data and assign the data that comes in into this local variable, a private property called dev job. And just put that information in the log. And of course, we need to handle this error too. If something happens here in the error, we're just going to say, all right, here, error. Just for now, I haven't, just I'm going to say console.log. And whatever error that is, we're going to just, user will see that. Well, it's not really, right, just for now, in the debug, well, in the development phase, it's okay, but later on, we would have, well, user not going to see console anyway, so just for now, it's okay. So right now, just to make sure my, it's facing data correctly and everything, let's see, we want to see that. Let's, oh. Not only that here, it, it's populated some of the properties here. Job title is set, it is now in Python, the company name. Some of the property is set, but it's not setting all the properties. Um, let's just verify for the other, other job. What is this one? This is, okay, see right here? It is correctly fetching the job title and the, and the company name, but it's not fetching other properties. Just to verify why it is working like that, um, let's look it into our API. API developers of for one zero one zero. Okay, so I think some because we have this property well company address. But this company address is null, so I think we have a bunch of error. It is because even if we look at into our console, we have so many errors. It's a address one is null. The idea is that this guy is this guy is already null, and we're trying to access the property of that object. This hey, I, I don't know. I'm null object. I don't know. I don't have any property. Okay, we have to fix this one. To fix this one, of course, we go into our server side. So we go into our developer jobs control, controller API. This is the, you know, the ASP.NET. It is, so basically like this is the method, this is a gate API, but it's just getting the developer job. That's why it's not getting all of them. So what we have to do, just like how we did for the, for our get developer jobs, when getting all the job, we need to slightly modify this. We're gonna say, I have to kill this one because it is a server side. So we're going to say include all of this. Okay, go to from the developer job. We would like to include company address, job type, industry, and everything. And once that is done, we're just going to face the single or default matching the our ID that's come in here. With that, most of our properties should be bound. Let's go ahead and run this guy. Okay, let's look it into view job here. And let's go into edit. Okay, so our job title is, is, is bound, company name is bound, all addresses here, you know, city, state, zip code. Uh, some property is not bound here though. Um, company size, just make sure, uh, let me face the other one, edit job. Company size is not bound. Let's see why this field is not bound. To look at that, let's go into our HTML component here and find company size. Okay, it says company size, but let's look it into render property, company size. Oh, this company size is a, 
It's a capital S. That's why um, that was not bound, I think. Let's go ahead and fix that one. Oops, that's my different visual instance of Visual Studio. Okay, company size. Let me capitalize that. Okay, let's save this. Let's go into this page. It automatically refreshed. Okay, it's loading. And it should be populating all of them. And it's a company size. So by looking at it, basically, all the properties that we have in the backend database is all of them are basically bound all the all the properties bound correctly with all, all corresponding uh, widget or input parameters uh, input text boxes or uh, drop down list text area whatever okay so now the next thing of course next functionality of course this we grab we need to change this level it's not really add developer job anymore on this page and right now where is that button here so edit developer job. Okay, so it's ed edit developer job. And uh, so right now, because we copied a bunch of code from the add developer job, so if we go into this component, edit developer job, and we have this event, this unsubmit event here. So, uh, I don't really care about this log because we know it's set. So I'm saying, all right, this code is okay. It's just basically saying this property are set. And I want to say one more thing. I want to say not only that. I want to make sure this this is a job ID is greater than zero. This is important. Then, if that is the case, then I want to say, all right, go ahead and edit developer job. And I'm going to pass two parameters. I'm going to pass the ID along with the saturated div object here. So I'm going to pass this does job ID. And the second parameter is div job. And right now, of course, this method doesn't exist in our service. We're going to go ahead and write this method. Let's go into the service and expose that method. Since this is TypeScript, right, we need to tell what kind of parameter it is so let's specify this is going to be a number and this div job I'm going to say a deval of oh, okay of type developer job and remember this time to update we're going to use the HTTP put verb we've been using get to get all the requests we have to post this time we'll be updating, so we'll be using the put verb here. This is the verb we'll be using for here for HTTP. I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of code from here. Um, in let our URL. Our URL structure looks kind of like this. We have a base URL. Developer jobs. And then 
we need to pass that um, job ID here. And once that is done, we should be able to call our put method. So we can say this HTTP put verb here and pass the URL. And then the second parameter would be um, the dev job. And the finally last parameter is the options here. Just like how we called for our post. And of course we have to return this. That is all we have to do. So when we do this, so basically what happens when we do a put request, it goes into the server side API controller and then we have the put method here. This is post, delete, where is our put? Okay, here as you can see this guy right here, HTTP put, and it takes two parameters, the ID and then the developer job. Okay, so here is a breakpoint. Okay, it's, it's good actually, this breakpoint is valid, I'm going to put it here. So at this point, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. Let's even go into our component. Our component is happy. This method exists and it takes two parameters. And since it's a return observable response, it, we, it has subscribe method. And then if everything is OK, um, we say we get the job ID and say, OK, develop a job, say just display the message. Um, job edited. I don't care about this method. We can wait. We can um, once that is saved, we're gonna go back and basically we're gonna navigate into the view page again because so that because the up, update of edit was edit was successful, we are ready to go into and then basically we display the message to the user and we go into the view page. Let's see. I don't know. I wrote a bunch of code here. Uh, let's see. I would like to. At this point, I'm also gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna monitor my edit profiler here. Why is so many crazy things doing? Okay, so my SQL Server profiler is also running, and let's say I'm just for this, I'm gonna change the itself. Company name is ABC Company from whatever it was before, and I'm gonna hit the I'm going to click this edit developer job button. My hope is it comes into this, which is good. It has the ID parameter, and here is the developer job. Let's see, it, it contains all the properties. Oh, it does here. As you can see, all the properties, this is the new one that we changed, is here. I'm going to go ahead. And if I look in my profiler, it's basically executed. Um, oh. This is the SQL statement executed. So basically, we have update for the company address, and then second update, we, it issued two updated statement because it, we have of course the the company to be company address to be updated also, and we also needed to update the developer job. Um, there's one more thing. I I, I modified this one. In the server side, by default, this uh, company address, it was not, the, I had to add this extra piece of code because initially, by default, the compiler only created to um, update this um, developer job, but we had, we have this, you know, the dependency, or not dependency, kind of like this child object company address. So that's, it, it automatically did not persist the company address. That's why I had to add this extra code into service to make sure if the company address is there, we go ahead and make sure all the property that are set, all the property that are changed for the address also should be updated. Okay, so we can, at this point we should be able to modify 
we should be able to test our code and make sure it is working cor correctly. Okay, let me get rid of all of them. Let's say, just say we. And then, this is one, two, three. I'm going to change something else. That's okay. Let's say, uh, sweet, whatever. And I'm going to go ahead, hit this button here. Why didn't do anything? Okay, guys, I think there was a bug. There was a bug I found. Um, for some reason, it is, even though we can, it is persisting and everything, but there is something wrong. The problem was. The problem was in our edit job component right here, we are expecting to have ID coming in from the server when we when we invoke that method. But however, if we go into our method here, this is our HTTP put verb, and what is it returning is a no content, but I would like to return. Oh, it's a running. Let me go ahead and kill this session here. I would like to return OK status with, uh, I'm going to pass the job ID here. Or just the ID, which is correspond to job ID. So this this return means everything inside here, all this code, this block of code, all of them get executed, gets executed successfully, meaning all of them would be updated, and then return the OK status. But it was returned the no content. That's why there was no response. I think that's what it was failing. Let's give it a try. Okay, so at this point, it's it's usually a good idea to you know uh, lead to your developer tools and making always noting the you know if there is an error, very errors in Angular Angular is very explicit. It basically, give you some. Let's go ahead and change some of them. We are looking for blah blah blah. I don't really care. So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. It said, okay, developer job edited successfully with job ID. It's still, it's still there is some problem. That job ID. Still, we got some bug here. But so let's see if I open this up. Just make sure it changes all our yeah it is. It changes. Let's let's change the industry. Make sure all of them are saved. It's, it's accounting, and there's a full-time job from government. Let's say private. It doesn't provide any remote option at all. Okay. And come back. Make sure everything is set. This is change accounting full-time private. Okay. It is everything is it's working. So um, this feature. So right now we have fully working. Uh, let's want to add one job here. A B C A main in of course in the United States salary range experience label entry label company size of 45 people. It's education. It's a full-time job in education industry. Okay. All right. This job right here just added two seconds ago, and then we can now we can delete. Of course, we're not going to delete it. We should be able to edit this one now. It's all of them is set correctly, and now we can change. Let's say. Entry label developer. Awesome job. We need to fix this one. Why it is undefined? That's the thing we have to fix and make sure it is. Yeah, 
everything is now entry level developed. Everything is updated correctly. That feature is working fine. It's hitting the backend database. Okay, guys, that is where I'm going to stop now. So next feature we're going to develop is like a view job details. So basically, this once this in the, on this page will dis, we'll display the you know whole detail of the page and then we'll also later on we'll develop a feature that basically allows applicant to you know apply for the job. Okay, so today we basically achieved a lot of things. Anyway, so um, I was I was. Um, I wasn't sure I would be able to complete this one in the whole picture in this session or not. Luckily, I was able to. Hopefully, you guys can understand. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.